I've said this before, but for those who didn't hear it, I must say it again. Uh, this is my birthday present. <laughs> I am not uh, born today on the 8th of, uh, of uh, September, but on the 30th of May. And on the morning, and I could almost show you the message, on the morning of the 30th of May, I received a message from Gerfried saying, would you like to present uh, Roger Malina and Leonardo uh, on the, at uh, Ars Electronica? I can't tell you how I felt. It was so wonderful. I thought, oh, I'm going back to Ars Electronica. It's such a great thing. But also to be able to really be able to say a few words about Leonardo and about uh, my dear friend uh, Roger Molina, who I feel like we were just saying as we got together right now, uh, it's been a long time. When I just said, I even just thought, well, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it really feels like, I know him sort of, I wouldn't pretend, but I do feel I've, I'm very close to him. So, yes, uh, those who have a chance to see perhaps the, the, the catalogue, I entitled my little blurb about, uh, about Leonardo, uh, coaching, the, uh, coaching the Global Culture. And you know, the reason I thought that was I suddenly realized the global culture, first of all, is becoming really global, and that's been a while. But on the other hand, it's also breaking apart in many places. And there are very different, we're very different times now than when, the, certainly when Leonardo began, or certainly when the Ars Electronica began. It's a, there is a certain fragility about the globe right now. And certain kind of networks, such as the one created by Leonardo, is putting that, is, is, is maintaining cohesion in that global vision, in the global understanding. And so it's very, so, there was a time when people were talking about silent majority. There's no such thing. Silent majority belonged to television, just like the global village that McLuhan thought about belonged to television. It was the era where people were actually more or less covered by the same message globally, nationally. But as soon as the uh, internet came on, uh, the silent majority started screaming in minorities. And uh, right now, we're, in deal we're dealing with a situation which is, which is, as I said, extremely fragile. And Leonardo seems to be a kind of an adult voice of civilization because it brings some very, it brings over the whole world. I and mean, we know that the celebration of the 50, 50 years has been happening in 25 different places in the world. That shows that the network is really there, present, active. And this is the, this is the dimension of that, of that uh, network, that it, it has a very special voice in the, in the planet. The other, um, the other thing which I find extremely uh, exciting and interesting about what Leonardo has st stood for, uh, think about the fact that it was born around the time when we were celebrating in Europe May 68, right? Uh, and you were 18. <laughs> so, what a, huh? And demonstrating, so it's, it's a time when boundaries were, were being broken. Boundaries between disciplines, boundaries between uh, various uh, levels of, of uh, government, boundaries of social boundaries generally. It was a time of revolution and I don't know whether, it would be nice to know whether your father was affected by May 68. Do you think he was? Did he hear about it? Americans didn't pay much attention to May 68, I must remember. That, as I remember, because I, already, I was already in Canada then. And of course, when I was coming back to Europe, I, there was a lot, of, a lot of excitement around the whole thing. And I'm sure some of you remember it. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, this is it. There was a mood at that time when you could actually rebuild things and re, re, reconsider things. Um, and what, and what uh, Leonardo was doing was bridging it was bridging two cultures. It was bridging the culture of the past. Your father wanted to make this an academic journal, uh, and you pulled it out of the academy up to a point. You didn't pull it out. You actually expanded from the academy, you know, bringing the arts into it. Um, at the time, anything to do with arts and technology, I was involved with it myself, in fact, from uh, uh, not, quite so <laughs> not quite so early. But as a director of the McLuhan program, I, r I ran it for, for 10 years, in fact, 15 years, an artist engineering program. But we were not taken very seriously at the University of Toronto. And the whole relationship, especially in the art world, 
nobody could care less about art and technology at the time. So that Leonardo did a very, very big uh, push in that direction of bringing or bridging those two cultures and just following uh, how the culture, the new one which is coming about, was unfolding. Uh, and that was something that uh, is, is very, very... Uh, yesterday, uh, Roger said, uh, we are your elders talking to Ars Electronica. True, true. And I don't know how much Ars Electronica was at that time immediately inspired by Leonardo, uh, as it went, rather how Leonardo was inspired by Ars Electronica. But the fact is, there is so much in common between Ars Electronica and Leonardo in terms of what I was saying before, coaching the global culture. We're all part of an attempt to understand what is happening as it is happening. Uh, and at the same time, having to break many boundaries in order, in order to be able to, to, to declare this. But what's wonderful about both Ars Electronica and Leonardo is that as they have pushed forward this bridging of cultures and as they have evolved and grown immensely, I mean, <laughs> your network grew enormously, Ars Electronica has grown enormously as well, without ever losing the fundamental character, without losing that extraordinary spirit that is both in Leonardo and in Ars Electronica. So it's no surprise that in the 50th anniversary, it's being celebrated right here. There are two huge networks coming together because they recognize each other's role. And so that's something that I find very, very important and, uh, and, and, and moving, to, to, to say the least. Um, Roger is very modest. He's, he's just a man of enormous accomplishments, but in every way, he sustains and supports and, and, and claims the group, the people who have been involved in working with him. Uh, in the first article, he's in, in the paper that he wrote, that he, no, you wrote, the paper that Leonardo wrote, all the team of Leonardo wrote about this event and this prize, the first statement is a very surprising and interesting one. Uh, saying, why, why do we always give prize to individuals? We should give prize to groups. We should give prize to uh, communities that actually, communities of practice that actually uh, create change and, and bring, uh, uh, making the world a better place, so to speak. So that in some ways I praise absolutely uh, your, your tenacity. Uh, the troubles you have gone through, we never hear about, we don't hear any more about how difficult it has been to have to deal with the, f the legal fight against, uh, what was the company called, the toy company that uh, was ri ripping you off or... Leonardo Venture Capital. <laughs> exactly, so that was, a very, that was a big battle that we don't sort of talk about very much. There was a fire who destroyed your uh, arch and, and, arf and archives, which is something... Again, this is the modesty of, of a man who has been able to overcome enormous difficulties, enormous challenges without making any fuss about it. In fact, if anything, that I've, my, my vision of, of, uh, uh, of Roger is uh, a man who keeps his calm and, in fact, is also enjoying any situation he finds himself in. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> exactly. So, anyway, I, I just want to... Uh, uh, say that I don't know how many people who are direct collaborators in this room at this point, but I certainly know a few, and uh, they will be having a chance, I hope, to talk in the uh, reception after. And so uh, I just want to thank Ars Electronica for the opportunity of having the honor of uh, praising uh, Roger and Leonardo, and I guess I could invite you to follow me.